one week after Helene devastated the Southeast, Britta, some sad news. The, that death toll has now risen to 220 people. And the scary thing is we don't know how high the number is going to climb. We still have a lot of people that have not heard from their friends. They've not heard from their loved ones. Mm -hmm. And that push to get communication lines to some of these harder hit areas continues to be pushed forward. Mm -hmm. Let's bring in Jane Menard. She is still alive in North Carolina this morning. A really tough process across Tennessee and Kentucky as we try and move forward. Jane, um, I know that your crew has tried really hard and done a great job getting to some of these smaller towns. We, we thank you for that, and I know that they appreciate it as well. Um, where do we sit in, in Cove Creek this morning? The devastation here is truly heartbreaking. You know, this is maybe only about 20 minutes or so from Boone, and it's been devastated. The Cove Creek, which streams behind me, had a near... 27 foot rise before the gauge broke. So we don't know truly how high this water got along the Cove Creek, but I can tell you from the devastation, it is widespread. Videos of mudslides pouring down the mountains here um, in Cove Creek, beautiful area too. When the sun comes up, it is gorgeous. I understand why people live here. Uh, Britta Kendall, I know that Governor Roy Cooper was in Boone yesterday and he was touring some damage with Mayor Tim Futrell. But the overall pulse of what I've been able to gather here on the ground, especially in these local communities, these rural areas, is that they haven't felt much help from the state just yet. It has truly been neighbors helping neighbors over the past week. In fact, I spoke with a woman yesterday um, at, at a local restaurant. She was working and, and she could barely hold back the tears when she told me that she's just grateful to be in Boone because she was trapped with her family. She's a four-year-old and a five-year-old. And they were trapped up in a rural town about 30 minutes from where Boone sits, back out to the west into the mountains. She said, we sat there for two or three days. We couldn't get out. She's never used a chainsaw in her life. I mean, truly, you never think about using it. I've never used one. And she said her and her husband used that chainsaw to cut themselves out of trees and find their way back to safety. They did that with a four-year-old and a five-year-old receiving no help. And she said, I don't want people to be forgotten out here. And, and I think that's, that's been my biggest mission is to get the word out that these people, they need the help. National Guard, they have been on the ground um, and they have been at these resource centers. That's where we've seen them in Boone, by the way, uh, not out here. In, in, in these more rural communities. But the only thing that we've seen in these rural communities has been the local sheriff's office, the local road departments, and they've been working with their community members to patch the holes, to put makeshift bridges up over these creeks so they can get to certain areas. And I know that the governor and the mayor spoke yesterday saying that they're working on the main arteries so that they can get these resources out across the county. But I think many feel fear it's not happening quick enough, and there are so many people that are still trapped that still need help. I know that there has been Samaritan's Purse and Red Cross, and they have been coming out to these areas. I've seen them several times cleaning up people's homes, and that is, that is the best of humanity to see that come together, people who need that help. But I think that there's, there's this overall feeling that the lack of communication is really beginning to settle in on people. They haven't been able to get in contact with state officials. They haven't been able to get in contact with even county officials to understand how many people are missing in their county, how many people have died. Right now, what we know, we had an update two days ago, th almost three days ago, from Watauga County, and the, the death toll hasn't risen. Um, so hopefully it stays that way, but given from what we're hearing from residents, they're fearful that it is much higher. I mean, Jane, it, it's heartbreaking to hear and also to continue to watch uh, the death toll number continue to rise. Jane, I'm curious, there's also a, a water shortage crisis that's going on um, in the region. I mean, tens of thousands of folks are without running water or a safe water to drink. What is that situation like in Cove Creek? 
Yeah, and that's definitely a big problem, especially once you get into these rural areas. And just yesterday, TEMA, up towards the Tennessee line, so that's the Tennessee Emergency Management Agency, they put out a avoid all contact water advisory, meaning the Watauga River, which snakes over the Tennessee border through Watauga County, the French Broad River, the Nolichucky River. They're worried because there's been contamination. A lot of these sites have been ruined. And now, when you look at the destruction behind me, I mean, this is the Cove Creek that's still babbling. People are cleaning up close to these water sources. And with Tima putting out that advisory, there's no end time to that, as I know of right now. That makes me worried for people who are now trying to do their best to get out, to clean up some of their yard, their yeah. property. And if they get in contact with that water, what that could look like. But as far as water shortages go, you know, they're trying their best. We've seen several, um, you know, Blackhawks. We've seen the Chinooks that have been flying up towards the, the state line, dropping down those resources, water bottles, so that they can be disseminated out to these more rural communities. Um, where we are in Boone, I've heard that there is some, some conserve it. They want, they're asking to conserve water a touch, but it, that message hasn't, I, f I feel like, really gotten, gotten out so s far and wide. And of course, Jane, as we continue to push day after day, some of these concerns grow larger. When we talk about the, the water safety, the level that the water got with all of this debris and all the contamination, it also touched all of the rubble. It, it touched people's homes, the belongings that they're trying to go through. And so for, for communities that are going out and they're touching it with their bare hands, then all of that concern that was in the water is now on their bodies. Have you seen any sort of support right. in terms of sanitation? Obviously, like there's there's different levels of response here, but if we're not careful about health and safety, then we enter a whole nother stage of this where we could have a humanitarian issue because folks are going to get sick from touching all of this because it's not just in the water. That water was touching everything and that means that pieces of wood, uh, a kid's toy that they might find, maybe a family photo, mm -hmm. it's all contaminated. So have you seen any sort of, you know, cleaning products that are being dropped from some of these drops uh, with the supplies so folks can try and think about health? I can tell you I have not. Mm -hmm. I have not seen that, and that does worry me. Um, I feel like the landscape is beginning to change over the last couple of days because now you are seeing how many people have gone back to their homes. You know, Samaritan's Purse, they're out here helping. Um, Red Cross is helping along with several other organizations. And it is just piles of people's things. Um, and coming up, uh, once we get daylight, I'm going to show you this home behind me. There's a note on there that reads, I'm, from the landlord to his renter, I'm so sorry, Samaritan's Purse is coming, take what you'd like. And the renter just wrote back underneath his note saying, take it all. Wow. Wow. I mean, you lose everything in these floods. Mm -hmm. Wow. The heartbreak just continues to compound itself. Um, Jane Menar reporting live in Cove Creek, North Carolina.